And let's look, Luke chapter 24 is the story of the first Easter and the party that was thrown in honor of what Jesus did and all that he accomplished. It wasn't a great party, by the way. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering at this thing, or troubled by this thing, Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you. And while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And then they remembered his words. So here we have the beginnings of the party. Mary and some of the other women, they've gathered the spices and they're going to the tomb where Jesus has been buried. Now Jesus has already told them, I'm gonna die at the hands of sinful men, but then I'm gonna rise. It's gonna be awesome. And so they're coming to the tomb with the expectation that Jesus is gonna be risen because he told them that. No, (laughs) false statement, not true at all. They knew what Jesus was gonna do, he had told them, and when he said things that they happened, he never gave them any reason to to mistrust what he said. And so they come to the tomb with the spices to, to mourn and to grieve. And when they're met with the stone rolled away, which is a miracle, and they're met with the body not being there, which is a miracle. What it says is they were troubled. And then they're met with these men, angels, who are, who are whose clothes look like lightning, and they're going, what are you doing here? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Didn't, remember, Jesus told you what was gonna happen. Like, this is why you come to the party? And it says that they were very frightened by these guys. <laughs> oh, this is even worse. And he says, don't you remember Jesus told you this? That this is going to be the, gr- the greatest day in history. He, he told you all about it. And then they remembered his words. And that's the summation of that part of the party. Oh, but maybe it gets better. So when they came back from the tomb, at least, you know, the disciples, they'll, they'll get this right. They told all these things to the 11. Judas wasn't there. He had taken his life. And to all the others that were there, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who had told this to the the apostles. So these are like Jesus' guys, right? Like, they're going to be ready to party. They know what Jesus said. But they did not believe the women. (laughs) Because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Jesus... Jesus had told them. In fact, Jesus had been so clear on this fact that it's actually the, the, the when, when Jesus went through all the di- different courts um, where he stood before all the different people, you know, before going to the cross as they were trying to figure out something wrong with them, as they were trying to pin, you know, um, crimes against him. One of the things they brought up was he continued to talk about how if he, you know, if we, des- if you destroy the temple of his body, then in three days he's going to rebuild the whole temple. And they, that was like blasphemy, that was troubling to them. So even they knew what Jesus was gonna do, or at least claiming to do. And here are the 11, they hear what these women have to say. They, they hear the, the message, the gospel being preached for the first time. And they're like, these women are crazy, man. These women don't know what they're talking about. They're all troubled, they're all blubbering, whining and crying all the time. I don't know what they're saying. Peter, however, come on now, right? Peter, he gets it right all the time. (laughs) He got up and ran to the tomb. He was so moved, he's like, let's go to the party. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and as he went away, he wondered to himself what had happened. (laughs) That's what he mustered up. Man. And, and we know by their actions what the disciples did is they, they went into hiding. They were like, this is not good. People are going to think we stole the body, and they're going to come after us. And they're going to do to us what they did to Jesus. 
and they hid, they were scared, they ran away. And, and when I read this, and I think about today and like the, what we're supposed to do, it's Easter. I mean, we're celebrating that Jesus conquered sin and death. We're celebrating that the gates of heaven got flung open wide to pieces of junk like you and I. Like all of our sin, all of our failings, but what the, what the resurrection was is Jesus saying, I want all of you. And the gates of heaven were flung wide open to you and I. No matter what we've done, no matter what we're gonna do, his righteousness can overcome all of our unrighteousness if we let him. I mean, this is a great day and we're supposed to celebrate. But just like these disciples, we have the same problem. We are conditioned in this life against faith, against hope, and against joy. The heartbreaks that we experience in this life have caused our hearts to be so hardened that sometimes we can even miss Jesus. Sometimes we can miss what he wants to do. Like I said, our fear does not give way to faith. It just stays as fear. And our heartbreak does not find its way to hope. It just remains heartbreak. Even with all the evidence that they saw, even though they, they were face to face with an empty tomb. They were face to face with angels declaring this, reminding them of what Jesus had already told them. They still had so much trouble believing. And I've been thinking about some images that, um, that came to mind as we were preparing for our Easter weekend, you know, some months ago trying to figure out what the Lord was wanting us to say and kind of how to frame it all. And one of the images that came to mind as we were thinking about it was, was I remember going with my family to QT one time. We were just going to get some health food and stuff. Um, <laughs> and we were walking down, and it was by our house, so we were walking down the sidewalk next to, you know, Greenway, which is a busy street. And, and there's, you know, it's, it, I think it, it might have been summertime, and it was hot, and, and it was just concrete and, and, and asphalt everywhere, and, and as we were walking, though, I remember seeing through just this like tiny little crack, there was this, this flower that had come up. Like in the midst of the summer heat, it's so oppressive, in the midst of just concrete jungle and asphalt laid over everything, this flower was just like, what's up? <laughs> and, it was, and it was in full bloom. And uh, we got an image, which obviously this is more beautiful than the one that I saw, but um, <laughs> there, was, there was no filter on what I saw. Um, but it, but it just, I just was looking at the, and it just struck me like, what a defiant little flower. It's like, it's like we did our best to just say, you will not grow here and laid out our concrete and our asphalt just to make sure that no life, nothing could get in the way. And yet, and yet this flower just had the audacity to, to just believe that what God had made it to do could happen in the midst of whatever situation it found itself in. And it just popped right up. You know, like, and it was shining bright and it was beautiful. And God used that little flower to just give me a little hope. That no matter what kind of hardness, no matter what I feel buried under, with Christ all things are possible. And the resurrection declares that it does not matter what the world, the devil, and the flesh throw at me. What God has put in me can come into full bloom. And that's the message for you. I don't know what you're buried under. Addiction, debt, heartbreak. If you allow Jesus in, he will come and you will experience this defiant hope rise up. This defiant faith in the midst of fear. A defiant joy at times. Now, that was another image that came to mind as we were thinking about this. I remember making a decision in my life that really just kind of ruined everything. Um, this is what it seemed like. I, I, I thought I was doing the right thing and I had done something, and, and it, but it basically just kind of really put me in a place where um, I was about to lose everything and uh, that I held dear and and uh, 
it was very heavy. And I remember I was in a seminary class, and I should have been listening, but I didn't listen that much in those classes. Um, and I just started drawing, a, drawing this tree. I was just like, I was so troubled. I, I, I just felt like all I could do was just draw this tree. And I drew this tree, and I was making it as like barren and dead looking as possible. Because it was like, this is just how my soul feels. And it was so funny, because as I was doing this, the one thing that I did learn in seminary is like, to hear God's voice. And, and I felt like, as I was drawing this tree with no leaves, I was making sure there wasn't a leaf anywhere, I kept feeling the Spirit of God inside me like, put a leaf on that tree. And I was like, no, I'm not putting a leaf on this tree. I am not feeling good about anything right now. I was feeling them, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it was real. And he's like, put a leaf on there. And I was like, no. And I was like fighting with God whether to put a leaf on this tree or not. And, and in the end, I was just like, oh, man. And I, I had to put, tree. and the, the leaf represented, it was true. Because even though, I mean, outwardly and inwardly, I was just feeling crushed and just so unsure and so uncertain and so insecure, I just, I just still had, there was just this defiant drop of hope that I could not quite shake. And it's weird that I was even trying to, but it, I just could not shake it. And then I found this image later on. This is not what I drew. My tree was really lame looking. Um, but, but I just, this tree, I have this actually in my office to remember that moment when God wouldn't let me he wouldn't let me give in. And, uh, and what's cool is I love the bird in this tree too because that was like the Holy Spirit saying, you put a leaf on that tree. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not putting a leaf on the tree. And I, I had to wrestle with God. But sure enough, you know, hanging on to Jesus and, and allowing his hope to grow, that decision I made has actually turned out to be one of the best decisions I've ever made. And God knew that. I did not but he knew what was on the other side. And then even just more recently, I was thinking, um, really at the, at the beginning of this year, you know, we had gotten through 2020. Woo! There's a little celebration right there. Ha, 2020, you can't come back. I don't think, <laughs> you know. Um, and 2021, we kicked it off and we did our fasting season where we're just trying to get a hunger, for the vision, uh, hunger and a vision for the righteousness of God, which by the way, next week we're starting a whole sermon series on the Sermon on the Mount where we're just gonna hear straight from the words of Jesus what he thinks justice and beauty is. So if you ha aren't going to a church somewhere, like it's time to get in here and get the word of God into you and oh, it's gonna be good. Um, but anyways, um, I got done with that, 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 that kickoff of the year, and I remember going home, and I'm always wiped out on Sunday morning, after Sunday mornings, um, and, I, and I usually about Monday afternoon start to like bounce back, and, uh, but for whatever reason, this time, Monday afternoon came and went, and uh, there was no bounce. <laughs> um, then Tuesday, and then Wednesday, and then Thursday, and I was like, huh, so, this is different. I just, I was numb. Um, even in like my prayer life, there was just no passion, no excitement. Thinking about preaching another message felt like death. And I just kind of was stuck. I had that, you know, like you have like the bottle cap on top. It's like popped up if it's okay. But then once it's like, once it's pressed down, then it just stays down. And I was just like, that's like, depre I was depressed. I was like pressed down and, you know, couldn't find any bounce back. And it just kept going. And then what was crazy is then at some point I thought, what if I never bounce back? And I know some of you who deal with depression, that, that's kind of the cycle. And then once you get to that point where you're like, maybe I'll never bounce back, then there's kind of a whole new level of depression that settles in. And it just continued on for a few weeks. And all I knew to do was just to keep hanging on to Jesus. And sure enough, you know, it, it did come back, bounced back. But I know some of you have been in that spot for a long time. But the resurrection's message is, is there will always be a bounce back. There is always a leaf on the tree. Doesn't matter what kind of thing you are buried under, Jesus can always bring out beauty and flowers. And that's kind of been a little bit of a theme for our whole church. My daughter, Bella, who's had to deal with a lot of adversity. She was praying about this year, 2021, and she said she kind of still felt there was a lot of adversity, but there were flowers everywhere. 
And so that's kind of been something that we continue to talk about is we're looking for the flowers in the midst of the pain. And that's that defiant hope, that defiant faith, that defiant joy that show up. And sure enough for the apostles as they continued, they didn't get it right away. They didn't come to the party very well prepared. But Jesus showed up to them actually multiple times. And eventually they allowed their faith to overcome their fear. They allowed that hope to once again come into that place where disappointment reigned. And they allowed his joy to come and be their strength. And these men and women, because of that fact, not only were they now fearless, not only were they walking in triumph and victory in a very adverse situation, but their lives even became evidence to the resurrection. And those that got to be around them and discipled by them, they followed suit and their lives became evidence that Jesus is alive. And on and on and on and, and further and wider until the gospel, the message that Jesus has lied has spread over the entire Roman Empire and then continued to spread beyond all of that. And there have been saints that have come throughout every generation from all over this world that have witnessed for themselves the evidence that Jesus is alive and they have received it into themselves experiencing the defiant hope and joy and love and peace that he brings. And on and on till today. And I'm just one person who can tell you stories of when my dad took his life and how the hope of God held like an anchor in my soul. And when my mom died of cancer, way too young, and how the presence of God and the peace of God came, and how there, over time my heartbreak has turned into hope. It's given way. And as the challenges continue to come, the, 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 the presence of Christ in my life, the living Christ that I walk with day after day, that I carry my burdens to, that I receive from, it has given me what I need to continue to overcome in my battle with sin and temptation, to continue to overcome when fear comes banging down the door. And last year, it was so awesome to see all the people in this fellowship who were unwavered by all of the disruption and uncertainty that came upon us. And so the offering is to you today. If you don't know Jesus, today is a great day to look at the evidence and to receive him. To allow your fear to give way to faith. Allow your pride to give way to surrender so that he can come in and he can lead you on that path of the just that shines ever brighter to the perfect day. And then ultimately the greatest joy of all is that one day because of what Jesus did, we will die. But that will only be giving us access to resurrection life. Death no longer ends man's story. But death is actually just something that helps us get to fullness of life. That Christ is preparing for us even now. And all of that can be yours. If you hear Jesus knocking on your heart, you can let him in and receive all that he has. Let's do that now. Let's pray. And if you're online or if you're in person, I'm just going to say a quick prayer. And you can repeat it after me. If you're ready to say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, come in. Jesus, take control. Just repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for rising from the dead for me. Please come and wash away all my sins. Please come and fill me with your spirit. And help my heartbreak turn to hope. And help my fear turn to faith. And help my pride turn to holy surrender. 
And when I die, Jesus, please take me to be with you. Amen.